Hello and welcome to Barnstable today for Monday, September 24th, 2012, the first week of fall here on beautiful Cape Cod. On our program this morning called Barnstable this morning, we had a chance to talk to Richard Elric. Richard Elric is the energy coordinator for the town of Barnstable, and in our conversation, we talked about the EV charging stations. Richard Elric has been working very hard for a couple of years on installing or having installed our new charging stations so that those people who have electric automobiles will have a place to go in the town of Barnstable to charge their automobiles. Currently, with the help of NSTAR, the new charging station is ready, complete, and in operation in Barnstable Village. As you can see here, the EV charging station in the village of Barnstable is up and operational. And as you can see here, the charging station, which is planned for Barnstable Town Hall parking lot, is in the process of being installed. Richard Elric, our energy coordinator, told us this morning that it should be a little while before the actual EV station has been received and will be installed. It was a good program. It was a good talk with Richard Elric. And of course, there are lots of people who are looking at possibly buying some new electric automobiles. And it's nice to know that you'll be able to charge those right here at four separate locations in the town of Barnstable. Later in the day, we spoke to Dr. Mary Chikowski, our school superintendent, and we talked about the MCAS scores. Here now is that interview with Dr. Chikowski. On the line with us is Dr. Mary Chikowski, our school superintendent here in the town of Barnesville. Good afternoon, Dr. Chikowski. Good afternoon, Lynn. How are you today? Oh, we're doing just fine, thank you. Uh, listen, I want to talk to you, please, if we could, about the MCAS scores, which came out, uh, the results came out last week, or were published last week, um, and Barnesville ended up pretty favorably, did we not? Yes, we did. Um, you know, we were above the state average, which is, which is always good, and uh, two comparable districts, I think, uh, were very competitive. I think one of the areas... Uh, that we've seen some uh, uh, weakness in that we're, we're uh, so sort of analyzing the scores as we're going along now is the um, subgroups. And uh, unlike many other districts, uh, you know, they're struggling with similar issues. It's, it's the MCAS uh, subgroups of our special education and our ELL students. And uh, in Barnstool, we've actually seen an increase in the number of our English language learners. Uh, so this is an area that we're focusing on. Uh, we're we're going to be analyzing the scores. Our curriculum coordinators and uh, principals are working to di disaggregate the data and to dig a little deeper and find out, you know, what are the interventions, what are the strategies we're using with our students um, to address some of these weaknesses. And my plan is uh, at our October meeting to be able to present uh, an overview to the uh, public and to the school committee. So that the MCAS scores that we look at, uh, I'm an average citizen here, and I pick up the paper and I see Barnesville is doing relatively well, included in that score are perhaps the students who may not uh, be able to speak the language very well because we get a lot of those kids who come into our schools or we get a number of kids who come into our school system uh, and there may be some special education kids that are uh, all aggregated I think was the word you used into that score and so now you want to figure out uh, exactly where they are and who they are so that possibly they, they might get more help exactly so for example at um, at our high school we have 70 English language learners at uh, Hyannis West, we have 90 English language learners. And some of those uh, English language learners are coming into Barnstable without having any, uh, any English speaking skills. And uh, they, they rank them anywhere from a level one to a level four. And a level one coming in with no English speaking skills, you know, is, is a challenge. And I think it's an area that we have to uh, address and to to provide them with more targeted interventions around reading, comprehension, fluency, uh, decoding. And so our, our goal here is to uh, look a little bit more deeper at these students and, and try to identify what are some of their areas that they're struggling in. And, you know, additionally, is it going to require some tutoring? Is it going to require um, small group work? Is it going to require after-school assistance? 
and, uh, and you know, in most cases with MCAS scores, I think we're, we're very competitive um, in the aggregate. So when I'm talking overall scores. But when you, when you, just as you said, when you begin to dig a little bit deeper into the special education subgroup and uh, the low-income st- subgroup and the ELL, we're comparative to other districts uh, facing similar challenges. So, you know, our goal is to continue to work hard uh, to, to look at these results, to identify uh, the students, and, and to provide them with some additional assistance. Now let's talk a little bit about fairness. Uh, th- there were some articles that were uh, printed in the papers uh, over the weekend. Uh, perhaps some of the private schools uh, yeah. and, and some of the charter schools may not have to uh, participate in the MCAS scoring. And in terms of fairness, uh, is that fair? <laughs> well, that's a, that's a great question, Len. And, and the article by Mr. Gonzalez this weekend, I think, uh, hit the nail on the head. Uh, absolutely correct. Uh, if if uh, you're a private school, you don't um, have to. Uh, you don't have to. Students don't have to take the MCAT. So um, you know, is it a level playing field? I don't think it is. I don't think you're comparing apples to apples, and uh, you're comparing apples to oranges. And yet, you know, when when you look at across the board the education that's being delivered, uh, I don't think you can compare us to the private schools because you know it's not a level playing field you have all different function to perform in a public school system as opposed to what they may be able to do in a private school system where obviously their numbers are going to be smaller and uh, th- they may as an overall school uh, have uh, a different way that they look at uh, how they teach absolutely and you know aside from you know if, if you have students anywhere from 8 to 12 in a class versus students in a public school where you have anywhere from, you know, 18 to 24 students in a class with varying needs, students that are on individual education plans, students that are ELL students, um, private schools uh, don't have uh, that kind of diversity. And so it's, you know, if we took our top students and we compared them to their top students, I think we would fare very well. But it's it's a different ball game, and I and I think you know from from the fact that they don't have to participate in in the MCAS, uh, they don't have uh, teachers unions in private schools, they have smaller class sizes, and so you know the fairness issue obviously is one of the way I look at it is it, it's not a level playing field. I think the thing that you omitted uh, in, in, in terms of one of the differences between a public school and a private school is they pay tuition and heavy tuition. And, and if I'm a teacher at a private school and I call a parent and I say, your son, your daughter is not doing very well, you better get them on the line here, uh, get, get, get moving. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're paying five, six, seven, ten thousand dollars a year to, to send your kid to the school. You, you, you better start getting on it. Whereas, uh, as a former t- a teacher at Barnesville High School, sometimes you'd make those phone calls and you'd get the answering machine. Exactly. And, you know, uh, you know, um, I, I, I did have a conversation more, most recently. Uh, I uh, actually had a nice visit with Bill Petru, who is the uh, head, headmaster at Cape Cod Academy, and, and I had a chance to visit the school. And, and you know, there is a difference. I mean, uh, parents are paying anywhere from 21000 to $24,000 a year. And, uh, you know, uh, the discipline problems uh, are far and few between. And I think, you know, so when you begin to look at that, I, I think we're, we all can learn from one another. One another. I mean, you know, the, the, the academy, the private schools can learn from the public schools, the public schools can learn from right. private schools. But, but I think when you're looking at comparatively speaking and you're looking at comparing those, you know, they're not the same. And, and that's the argument. And so, you know, we have, you know, I think public schools are overregulated. We have so many mandates, so many requirements sure. that we have to fulfill. Sure. They don't have those <clears throat> kind of requirements, and it takes away from that valuable uh, uh, instructional time. Sure. All right. Mary Chikowski, Dr. Mary Chikowski, uh, Superintendent of the Barnstable Public School Systems, thank you so much for joining us on Barnstable Today. Today. <laughs>